Alright, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Trent C. Back with another video. Anyway, today we got another Jamara video. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's titled Drake Continues to Embarrass Himself. Now, look, subscribe, bro. Why are you not subscribed, bro? Like, it's like the people who watch me and these reactions. Hold on, wait. Make sure y'all can see. Okay, go cool. But um, the people that <clears throat> be watching the reactions, bro, y'all niggas don't be subscribing, bro. I be having a thousand fucking, I be having thousands of viewers that's not subscribed. You know what I'm saying? So subscribe if you new. <laughs> if you not new, welcome back. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Let's get straight into the video. Let's do it. Weeks have been tough for both Drake and his fans after he decided to officially wave the white flag in his beef against Kendrick Lamar He has still been somewhat active. For I don't think he waved the flag. He just Wasn't responding anymore It couldn't go on forever. What the fuck? Somebody had to stop people saw him out in the Turks partying which is hilarious considering this line from meet the grams of course, he also had the Twitter Riddler and his cryptic messages that he shared, along with some of Drake's belongings he allegedly possessed. And yes, I know the journalist Christopher what? Alvarez now claims that Drake did no wrong that night, but the more I think about- Wait, that was a real- that was a real person? Oh, shit. And I said the fuck, I'm sorry. The stranger it sounds for Drake to want to hang out with this guy of all people, at 3 a.m. in his hotel room, where Christopher claims that Drake played him some unheard beats. Not even songs, just beats. Which Drake doesn't even <laughs> make beats. I don't know, the story is just not adding up to me. Regardless, in Bro. an attempt to pop back out and silence the critics, Drake did come back with a feature on Sexy Red's new album, specifically yeah. on the song You My Everything. And I have to say, I say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> listening to her part of the song i think miss red might have damaged my brain permanently i mean her performance here is just straight up garbage like i'm talking about way worse than soul train i'm like what is it me for now in his feature drake attempts to silence the haters should be catchy, and though. to diffuse the ever-growing buzz around the first and greatest diss beat of all time metro boomin's bbo drizzy <laughs> Now here you get the same bullshit Drake that we've gotten over the last couple of years. Lazy lines about having sex and bars about the tough guys in his entourage. But this one's gotta be my favorite. Soon as this shit get resolved, I'll turn librarian for you. I'm booking that shit. Why? And when here's he where he that? tries to reclaim his status as the true BBO god. Sampling the record itself and saying, Me and the surgeon got history. I changed a lot of girls' lives for real. They need a new... Bro, why is this shit AI, bro? Like, can we hear the actual song? What the fuck? Body that hit me. Hey, BBO Drizzy, they want a new body. They asked me for it. The last one, Jung, he did it for free because I sent so many past ones for him. So here Drake is saying, yes, I am indeed the BBO God because, yes, I've likely spent millions of dollars getting various surgeries for various women. I mean, at this point, Drake is looking at these chicks like builds a bitch, apparently. <laughs> In this way, I guess Drake tries to divert the joke on himself into a W. All I know is that stupid BBO Drizzy hook has lived rent free in my head for weeks. And the fact that people were dissing him in a thousand different languages was just hilarious. <laughs> Overall, this song still makes. What the fuck? Oh my god. And it sounded like he was running that shit too. I don't know what he was saying, but it sounded like he was running that shit. My ears bleed, at least for the first two minutes. But Drake's flow really is great here. I do have to admit, though, I find it hilarious that he keeps fulfilling prophecy after prophecy. When I see you stand by sexy red, I would need you to see two bad bitches. Even the biggest Drake nut gargler has to admit that the optics of this are hilarious. Now, more recently, a ghost from Drake's past has revealed its ugly head once again. Or should I say Ghost Riders? Shout out Brian, man. It's a great human being. It's a great human being. 
Back in 2015, Drake would famously destroy the then very respected Meek Mill in a rap battle. He took down the dude from the streets who was known for getting hyped on the mic, releasing Charged Up and then the hit record Back to Back in the matter of a week. Drake crushed any chance that Meek might have had by hitting him in his most vulnerable spot. I remember back then, I had just left off to college, and when I heard back-to-back -back playing at house parties and on the radio, I said, holy shit. But back-to-back -back was that shit, though. Like, charged up. Like, it was cool. You feel me? It was, it was a good song. But back-to-back, -to -back, though? Back-to-back -back was one of the ones. I can't count. My guy Meek is cooked. He tried to come back. I tried to hype up his responses to my friends, but it did not matter. Everything about Back to Back was perfectly strategized. Even the artwork for the song directly referencing the walk-off home run in Game 6 of the 1993 World oh, Series hit by that. Joe Carter was so well planned. For those of you that don't know, that home run propelled the Blue Jays to Back to Back championships. I didn't know that. Drake had entire crowds of people saying lines like, You get body by singing there. Alluding to uh, Meek's then relationship with a much bigger in 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 I forgot the words, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna cap. Tainer than himself, Nicki Minaj. At the time, his status as her boyfriend was eclipsing his status as a rapper. Don't get me wrong, he was still dropping good music, but he was becoming more known for being Nicki's boyfriend more than he was for being Meek Mill, which is something a man is obviously going to be clowned I don't think that's true. This whole song is layered with references that emasculate Meek, who was known for his tough guy gangster image and ferocious delivery in his songs. For Drake to drop a radio hit on his head through a diss record is something that we had not seen for a very long time. And this really got him a lot of credit as an MC, and he really shed the soft R&B Marvin's Room guy label. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, why do I bring this up today? Well, first off, let's just acknowledge that what Kendrick did to Drake recently is exactly what Drake had done to Meek almost a decade ago. Because just like Drake recently, Meek bro, actually- but I don't think Kendrick won for real, bro. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I, yeah, I genuinely just don't think Kendrick won. Since Kendrick put out the most disses, that mean he won? Like, nah. Nah. Some decent records of his own during that beef. Dropping Wanna Know, War Pain, and Pray See, but these, I forgot which one. It was one of them. It wasn't the left one. I think it was the middle one. The middle one was hard as fuck. I think they were both EPs. I don't know. Three great records that got completely eclipsed by Back to Back. In these songs, he talks about how Drake is an inauthentic artist, even calling him the new Millie Vanilli. Was it Quinn Miller? Was it Hatcher? Was it Detail? Where you really got your flow? Is she texting someone behind your back? A single Spokio search can help you find out who she's messaging. Spokio can... Referencing an R&B duo who infamously failed when it became public knowledge that they weren't actually singing a single note on their hit album. But in the end, it did not matter. Me could have dropped the most scathing record of all time, and no one would have cared because the public perception was that Drake had already won. Does any of that sound familiar to you guys? Like Kendrick just got two platinum records calling him a PDF-5. Bro, and that is crazy, but them bitches, them bitches blew the fuck up, bro. But then again, though, Drake dropped more music to him. Kendrick does not drop music. So, of course, his fan base, you know what I'm saying, is going to, like, they was eager for music, you know what I'm saying? And Drake just shit just got him out of there, you feel me? And then, obviously, Drake, um, Drake's fan base is going to listen to Kendrick shit, too, you feel me? Because they want to listen to both sides, you know what I'm saying? And just like Drake recently, 
Mink seemingly went into this battle with no strategy. And to me, in the end, that's why they both lost. Now, to Mink's credit, during this beef, he did expose the most glaring kink in Drake's armor at the time. And that's the fact that he had gotten a lot of quote-unquote help from Ghost Riders writing some of his biggest songs. There is a reason that the term OVO sweatshop was coined at this time. As people began to speculate that Drake would use his record label as a guise to bring in talent, suck them dry for inspiration and ideas, and essentially sign his name on the top of their homework, and really leave them even worse than they were before they met him. You're not an artist anymore, little guy. You make my hits now, pussy. Meek. What's up with the AI shit, bro? Like, it's low-key killing me. It's, it's killing the nigga. You know what I'm saying? ...called him out on record to give Quentin Miller his due credit for his work on If You're Reading This Is Too Late. I don't wanna know if you ain't right there running through the six shit. Tell us who the folks quit running through the six with. And even tweeted out, stop comparing Drake to me too. He don't write his own raps. That's why he ain't tweet my album, because we found out. Following this beef, reference tracks to several Drake songs would be released. People were shocked as they heard Quentin rap melodies and choruses from songs like Rico, Ten Bands, Started Damn. from the Bottom, and Know Yourself. Damn. Damn. Other reference Damn. tracks would be released from Party Next Door for the songs Company, Legend, and But you. shit, fuck it though, bro. Like, a lot of people got ghostwriters and shit. You feel me? So what, bro? Me. Man, imagine this is your dream to write for a massive artist like Drake, and in the end, you don't even get paid for your contribution. I never got a publishing check off of any Drake songs. Regardless, mm. the ghostwriter Damn. allegations had cooled off for a very long time after this. Drake, of course, went on to drop a ton of hits and several albums. But now the ghosts of the past are seemingly back, as the reference tracks have leaked for Mob Ties, Ratchet Happy Birthday, and Jumbotron shit poppin'. Specifically, I do want to hone in on Mob Ties here because, well, Ratchet Happy Birthday Who fucking sucks. Mob ties? And Mob Ties by many is considered to be a classic Drake song. As many felt it was a response to push a T. Just listen to how his biggest fans feel about it. But I did hear about that maybe he got some help on Mob Ties. And I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, Mob Ties is a song that I felt that that was Drake with his back against the wall. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, Drake here, if here right? It, fe it felt a way. Song. Yeah, th like that, I would be like, mm, that would hurt my heart. What's one of our favorite songs, man? Oh, he didn't write that song. I forgot, it was something. I heard something about Mob Ties. Oh. Sick of these niggas. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I didn't have Mob Ties. Oh, I'm sick of these niggas. I'll hire some help. Yeah. Get rid of these <laughs> niggas. But now we're finding out that an artist named Vori is allegedly the man behind Mob Ties. The flow, the cadence, yeah, everything is mapped out on this reference track. Sick of these niggas. Sick of these bitches. Hire shooter. Hire shooter. Rid of these bitches. Now, should we be surprised by this? Absolutely not. But it does just show yet another prophecy he coming through. Like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he act tough. And now we're finding out that he didn't even write his most infamous tough guy anthem. Now, in any other genre, I don't think many people would give a single shit. But in rap, this has always been considered a cardinal sin. And for someone who has claimed over and over again that he is the best rapper in the world with the best pen, well, people find it comical. And Wouldn't say he's the best rapper in the world, you know what I'm saying? But I believe he is the best artist in the world. The best rapper in the world is Wayne. Um, yeah, it's Wayne for sure. But, uh, but Drake... Drake is talented, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously. <laughs> God dang, bro. This bitch feel. Hold on, let me make sure my shit's great. Okay, cool. But, um, better off saying. <sighs> fuck it, bro. I forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. Let's just do it. Listen, guys, I love many Drake songs. I spent many years and had many good times listening to Drake. He has several classic albums to me, and he is arguably the greatest entertainer of my generation. But somewhere around 2017, I stopped checking in on his music. I think Scorpion was the first record I really didn't enjoy. And unfortunately what? for Drake, he just went up against the most authentic artist I've ever seen when it comes to representing where he is from and how he is raised. And when you stack that up against a manufactured 
mega artist who seemingly has no boundaries as to which flow of style he might steal next. He was really fighting an uphill battle. And but Scorpion was no wearing a wise though. All was just a horrible decision. Like he went from begging Kendrick to drop to saying, oh well, well that was just a fun little sparring session. Like he got cooked to the point that almost a month later Drake's biggest fanboys are still scrambling and crying over this massive L. And Jesus Christ, is it beyond easy to trigger them at this point? But y'all let me know what you guys think about this. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this situation, you feel me? Um, I ain't even show y'all my red hair, you know what I'm saying? This is my red hair and shit, you know what I'm saying? Some smooth shit, I guess you could say. I like heat. Anyway, uh, if you're new, subscribe. Um, and yeah, I'm out, ED.